Hi, I'm Carolyn Evans-Hammond and welcome to my tasting room. Carolyn's Tasting Room is where you can taste exciting wines with me. And this week, we taste four wines to set you up for long weekends. You only get so many long weekends in life, so we should make them count. And if you're a wine lover, that means keeping a range of bottles on hand to punctuate every essential moment. So today's flight includes the non-vintage Falinari Prosecco DOC Extra Dry from Italy, the 2021 Juliet Prosecco Rosé DOC from Italy, the 2022 Lucarelli Bianco Puglia from Italy, and the 2020 Gnarly Head Old Vine Zinfandel from California. Let's taste. So the first wine in our flight is a Prosecco. Now this is a new Prosecco by Falinari, who you're probably familiar with because they, you know, they produce a very popular Pinot Grigio and a very popular Valpolicella, but this is a Prosecco, new to the market, and I think it's stellar. So it's an extra dry, which means it's slightly sweeter than a Brut, something to the tune of between 12 and 17 grams per liter. So we'll be looking for that kiss of sweetness when we taste it. So pour yourself a glass and let's take a look. You'll immediately notice the persistent bubbles. Also, the size of the bubbles are important. And here we've got tiny, tiny bubbles beating up through the center, which is lovely because small bubbles, you know, they present as elegance in the mouth. They create a, sort of a little bit of a creamy mouth feel, which is associated with quality. So lovely, exactly what we want to see. It's also persistent and on the nose, that's lovely, isn't it? It's not too forward. You know you're in you know you're in Italy because there's restraint here. This is not forward. This is not fruity. There is fruit, but it's elegant. It's delicate. What are you getting? Are you getting a little bit of white apricot? I am. Maybe white pear, but gentle, wispy illusions. And beneath that fruit. See if you can pick up the salinity and the stoniness. I certainly can with this wine and I like that. So it smells beautiful um, on the palate. Let it sweep in. Notice the texture first. The texture is, you know, it's creamy. Going back to that effervescence and the tiny bubbles, it's creamy as opposed to, you know, aggressive. Um, and I like that, again, mark of quality. It sweeps in, beautiful balance. It's not coming off as too sweet at all or too tart. Again, balance. So let's take that apart technically. Let's have a little taste. Focus on the tip of the tongue to see if it's dry or sweet. You'll notice it there. Because hmm? we're not focused on the sides, so the sweet comes to the fore. And this has something around, I would argue, maybe 14 grams or 15 grams per liter, which is, which is fine. It makes it, it makes it supremely drinkable, really. Now let's focus on the sides of the palate. So let the, let the wine wash in back there, focusing there, and we'll see how high the acid is. The more your mouth waters, the higher the acid. Mm. Very high acid very mouth-watering. That is why we don't notice the sugar, acid hides sugar, and you end up with deliciousness, just that sweet and sour tension that creates, you know, just a quenching wine. So that's what we've got here. Now let's have a sip, focus mid-palate, and see how the fruit is expressing itself. Mm. It's wispy, isn't it? sort of sheer flavors, but those flavors are shifting. So first there's the white apricot and pear, and then it shifts to more savory notes. So, you know, wet stones, that hint of salinity on the finish, you get that? And that is what 
you know, lingers. So your palate is left seasoned with a little bit of salinity, making this a fabulous wine to pair with food. You could have, of course, cocktail style. The sweetness helps there too, but you could also pair it with food because of that saline finish and because of how your palate is scraped clean, so it's refreshing at the table. The kind of wine would be fabulous with goat cheese salads or even crostini, especially with maybe mushrooms on it. Um, so we've got something that's clean, pure, bright, easy, and really easy elegance. And the second one in our flight is a sparkling rosé. Now this is a this is a rosé prosecco. It's a relatively new category of wine out of Italy. It's made from glira, glira grapes like white prosecco, but it's made pink with a portion or a splash of pinot noir. So we'll be looking for that raspberry, cranberry, violet note we always associate with pinot noir. Um, another thing about this wine is it's a bit of a bargain because it's about $15 in Canada and you can get it for around $12 or $13 in the US. So a bit of a, bit of a steal really. Um, it's an extra dry, so we're looking for some residual sugar. It should express itself a little bit like a kiss of sweetness. And pour yourself a glass and let's taste it. First look at the color. Oh, does that not remind you of sunsets? I love that. This is a kind of wine that would probably pair beautifully with a sunset. So love that. The bubbles are tiny, persistent, which we want to see. It's also clear and bright, which means it's stable and on the nose. Hmm. Purity, isn't it? There's nothing off-putting. It's very clean. Lovely. It's also very restrained. Do you notice that? So the fragrance is wispy. The bouquet suggests maybe Berries, yes, red currant I'm finding. A little bit of the raspberry for sure, and the pear. Pear is what I always associate with glera, glera grapes, and I'm getting that. But the, you know, the, it's restrained. There's um, an elegance coming through because it's restrained, and I like that. So have a sip, and we're just gonna let it wash in and experience the wine first. Mm. Isn't that great? It's just like liquid refreshment. It's clean, it's crisp, it's vinous, so not too fruity, um, but it does cascade. And it does, it's interesting because it sort of amplifies on the palate after it streams in. So you've got the brisk attack and then the fruit amplifies or blooms. Is that nice? So let's parse that apart. We'll have a sip, focus on the tip of the tongue to see if we can assess that residual sugar and isolate it a little bit. So that has 13 grams per liter, so slightly more sweetness, like one gram per liter more than a Brut. So it is dry. I'd argue it's a little bit drier than the first wine, but it's beautifully balanced with the acidity. So let's have a sip, focus on the sides of our palate to see if we can assess that acidity. Bright, brisk, not quite as high as the last wine, but beautifully balanced with the sweetness and the mid-palate fruit. No alcohol at all is showing through, which you want. You don't want to be drinking anything where alcohol is showing through, and that's because it's well balanced. So the fruit is blanketing the alcohol, so there's no heat at the back of the palate from that 11.5% alcohol. And 11.5 is nice and light. Again, sunset, you're just having this maybe as a sipper with maybe just a handful of nuts, if anything. So you don't want, you know, a lot of alcohol. So I like that. Um, have another sip. We're going to see how, how it expresses itself on the palate. Streams in, as I said, a bright attack. Not too shrill, but not shrill at all, but bright, luminescent. And then it seems to expand a little bit and you're getting, you're getting the pear. You're getting raspberry, maybe a hint of violet, especially on the finish. You're getting that? I am. And the finish, it's almost, it's interesting because there's almost a little bit of grapefruit pith on the finish too, which is nice. That astringency makes it grip a little bit to the palate and leave something there. So you could indeed 
pour this with maybe a nibble of cheese. That would work very well. Um, but it's a kind of wine that sets the moment and over delivers for the price. And the third wine in our flight is Lucarelli Bianco from Puglia. So this is a still white wine from Italy. It's a blend of different grape varieties. So we should see lots going on in the glass on the nose and palate because you know each grape variety is going to contribute its own profile. And this is a young wine. It's 2022. So it's young and fresh. It's also really inexpensive. So it costs less than $10 in the US and a little bit more around 1095 in Canada, so it's a bit of a bargain bottle too. So pour yourself a glass and let's look in the glass. It's clear and bright, which you want. It means it's stable, well filtered, well fined, and give it a swirl and a sniff. Much more forward than the last two wines, isn't it? Mm. So clean, yes, there's nothing off putting at all on the nose. And it's quite forward. So there's, you know, almost confected sense of lemon zest, sugared, you know, white cherry or something like that. And absolutely apple, sort of like a honey crisp apple. Beautiful, but definitely fruit forward. And it's a kind of wine, by the way, that I would love to pour those California salads, the ones that, you know, have a bit of fruit and nuts on them. Beautiful. So. On the palate, let's have a sip. We'll focus just on, no, let's just sweep, let it sweep in first and experience it, and then we'll get to the technical bits. Mm. Isn't that lovely? Easy, juicy, you know, it's not too neutral. There's something going on, there's flavor, which makes it attractive this time of year when you're grilling food too, because it'll stand up to whatever grill marks might be appearing on those fire infused foods. So now let's have a quick sip, focus on the tip of the tongue to see if we can assess the sweetness because we did find a confected note on the nose. When we let it sweep in, it tasted, it didn't taste too sweet, but we can technically detect the sweetness by focusing on the tip of the tongue. There's sweetness there. Now technically it has around you know, six or seven grams per liter, so not a lot, just enough to make it taste polished in the mouth, like polished to a high sheen, which is nice. It's sort of fetching. Have another sip. We'll focus on the sides of the palate to see how high the acid is because that acidity has to always balance the sweetness. Mm. Balanced. It's not sky high, but it's enough to uphold hold the fruit and balance that kiss of sweetness, which is why everything just tastes smooth, seamless, and glossy. Now, the flavors, are you noticing the flavors? The flavors are, you know, they're fresh and they're white fruit, white orchard fruit. That's what I'm getting. So have a sip and let's see if we can sort of isolate that. Hmm, white peach apricot, pear, honey crisp apple again, but clean, clean, clean. And there's enough flavor, enough fruit stuffing to know this is not Pinot Grigio. This is something that's a little bit more forward than that, juicy, and it's the kind of thing you can have with salty snacks in the afternoon. Speaking of the afternoon, you know, this has only 12.5% alcohol, so you don't have to worry too much about something that's going to be, you know, too high in alcohol and you can't really have it with anything but a full-fledged meal. Now, there is no alcoholic heat on the back of my palate. What about yours? None? That means it's well balanced. The fruit is blanketing all the alcoholic heat, so it's not showing through at all. Now, the length is not terribly long. I can't taste anything left from the wine now. Um, it's so it's short, but what that does do is it keeps you sipping because the wine is a pleasure to drink. Mm. Absolutely. You know, bring on that California salad with those fresh slices of ripe strawberry on top, maybe some blanched almonds. Lovely. 
but you could also pair it with cream sauces. This would go really well with even a pasta with a rosé cream sauce. Maybe some grilled chicken on top. I bet you're getting hungry. I am. And the fourth one in our flight is a red. It is a 2020 Gnarly Head Old Fine Zinfandel from California. So pour yourself a glass and just look at that. Look at how dark black it is. I mean, it's, it's very dark. I mean, it's probably dark purple more than black, but certainly looks black in the middle. It is opaque. That's Old Vine Zinfandel for you. Zinfandel is a very dark wine and you can see that. So give it a swirl and a sniff. Do you notice that? This is all dark stuff. So, you know, damson plums, black cherry, muddled blackberries, bitter chocolate, mm, all of that. Maybe a little bit of, you know, roasted almonds or roasted hazelnut. And we do know that this spent a little bit of time with um, American and French oak, so that's probably where that's coming from. So lovely, it's clean, it's you know, the kind of thing that you can splash in your glass and enjoy. So let's have a sip. Sweeps in, it's clean. And to me, this is all about cherry vanilla, you know? A little bit of nuttiness on the finish, a little bit of maybe milk chocolate, but a lot of cherry vanilla. Now the, the fruit, the sweet fruit is there and it's quite forward. The vanilla is coming from the American oak and it's a kind of that, you know, taste profile makes it easy to enjoy cocktail style, but it also works well with grilled food. So lots of moments you can hit with this wine. So let's have a sip, focus on the tip of the tongue to see if we can assess the residual sugar. So we're going to taste technically now. Mm. Do you notice that? there is some sweetness. Not a lot. It's actually to the tune of around eight grams per liter, which is not a lot, but it's enough to kind of round out everything and make it taste really smooth, which is nice. Now we're going to have another sip and we're going to focus on the sides of the palate to see if that's balanced with, uh, the sweetness is balanced with acidity. Mm-hmm. Not high acidity, but balancing acidity. So again, very smooth, lots of mid palate stuffing. And what I love here is, are you getting any alcoholic heat on the back of the palate? I'm not. Try again, we'll focus there. Even after the swallow, none is there, none. Which is pretty fascinating given you know, a glance at the label tells you this is 14.5% alcohol. So this has a lot of alcohol, but it's not showing through at all. It would show through as alcoholic heat if there wasn't a really thick, plush layer of fruit, which there is, otherwise it would show through. And there's some length, which I like too. And the flavor on the finish is the same as, you know, on the entry. I'm still getting cherry vanilla. Maybe a little bit of cola, definitely dark chocolate too, and a hint, a hint of granite, like, you know, pencil shavings. So the granite from the, the pencil and the, the wood, and that's classic for wood aging. So I really like that. There's some lingering, um, the, that lingering nuance is going to season your palate and the next bite of what I hope is a grilled hamburger. So there you have it, four wines that will totally set you up for all those long weekend moments. Which one did you like best? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm coming right back with another flight of delicious wines so you can drink better and learn how.